I'm not gonna be here very long. I apologize as a speech lag because my life sucks, okay? I'm not gonna be in the second part very long. I just want to talk about the people who pity me. In my first part, I was rapping on about how it is quite audacious and frankly irresponsibly so to pity me because I have arrived, like proper. So arrived am I that the car that I used to arrive at this particular destination is sitting outside, battery dying with dust on it for like 10 years. And so it's gonna need a little bit of a booster cable to get started again because that's how long I've been here. I've been in heaven for a minute now, yeah. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm seated in heavenly places with the man Christ Jesus, but people underestimate us. The scriptures say that the least on the earth are going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first. I am last, I am lowly, however, I am first. I'm gonna rock up back here. After seven years of struggling, you guys through a lot of minutes, yeah and reign rule with jesus for a thousand years so over and above being lamp pasted by people in the sky they're then gonna come back and run you however many of you are left to live according to the scriptures it's just um a third of the human race two-thirds of all of us all of you please don't put me in that equation i'm totally exempt yeah uh get to die two-thirds of you die like two-thirds do you understand so really and truly it is the norm to die and you are the exception when you survive and if you survive you're going to have to deal with the fact that Karabo is your super duper califrigid extra kenny yoshes boss i am going to rule and reign with christ for a thousand years so who in the world pities their boss lady no come on now let's talk about that go and grab the ceo of your company and then just start being like oh sir oh goodness man do you need any help uh, so he's gonna look at you and say mean my lord now it's a long mona this person's talking if anything security please get this person out of here i feel like they've got an illness they gotta go home do they even work for my company i don't understand yeah you would not do that to your CEO, your MD, your boss, your senior manager. You would not be like, oh, you know what? Just wait over there and then go and grab a loaf of bread that is two days old in your pantry and give it to your senior manager. She would be insulted. And that's kind of where I'm sitting right now, where I'm literally like your MD, your boss, your CEO, sign or that nature, uh, according to heaven's terms. And your people are like, oh, let's see if we can't get some pre-moldy bread in her ecosystem. Spare me, do that. Allow me to communicate. The individuals over here whose uh, booze I rejected at my bring own pity party. So that uh, now that we have disqualified entirely that I belong at all to the pitiable conglomerate let us talk about the body of human beings that actually pity me as so as to basically throw them out of a window uh so let's just do that uh the people who are pitying me categories let's talk first it is the christians really in inverted commas what in the world are you doing like cease and desist if you are a christian looking at me feeling sorry for me um like get out of my ministry do that do you understand if you are in any position at all to enable a sister or a brother along and you don't you sin the lord says in his word if you know what good there dwells in you to do and yet you don't do it the very same person sins so you do better to just walk away from my ministry instead of feeling sorry for me and then holding back because of jealousy on that day you are just ananias and safira i spoke about you first because i've already covered that topic at length and so i don't want to labor all right you are facing the judgments of matthew 25 where god is going to tell you when i was hungry you didn't give me food when i was naked you didn't give me drink when i was thirsty you didn't give me um when i was naked you didn't give me clothes when i was thirsty you didn't give me drink when i was in prison and sick you didn't visit me and when i needed the hospitality you did not come on right ahead to invite me into your home you are facing that as a judgment so if at all you find yourself still hanging out in these streets in these dirty moldy streets just like the moldy bread you thought to give me proper you with your blemish sacrifice because your name is Cain and you envy Abel understand that you're currently on shaky water because there is no way under heaven you can qualify yourself as a saint if it is in your prerogative nor all power to enable a Christian to not suffer so much and you don't do it on that day like I said you are Ananias you are Safira and you are among the conglomerate of people in Matthew 25 that God tells I never knew you 
the next batch of randos out here in these streets that need to leave me alone with their pity and rather just come around already and repent are my afflictors thank you very much randos you put me in the position to suffer yeah you know when you're sitting around in gangster boulevard for so long that ultimately like all the blood that you have shed starts to catch up with you you not only like that you're so mean anymore you now are starting to have some real qualms with the fact that you're just a nasty you're having some real serious problems with the fact that you're frankly you know undesirable to society you are a menace to society you leave a lot to be desired you prefer to be one of those innocent souls that can just walk into a grocery store mm, and buy some stuff without somebody seeing your photograph on a milk carton because you are the most wanted man around you just want to live a normal life but you're a prolific criminal and you've done some pretty abominable things and now it's eating alive at you it is chewing away at your toes it is anacrotizing fasciitis threatening you with amputation and then you have the brazen audacity following that random incendiary uh, uh, agenda activity uh, to, to end, not envy correction what I wanted to say was pity your victims you pity the person you put in the ground or you pity the mother that you made a widow and uh, what do you say you made, the, you made that woman a widow and to also mourn her own child because you killed the dad and you killed her children and now that she just can't stop crying this poor little thing yeah you, you feel sorry for her you feel sorry for her oh my goodness uh, who is this? Um, what you might call this? There's a show called Blacklist on Netflix. And the lead character there is this like guy that people are trying to make look good because it's a criminal show and he's the lead character, but he's just totally evil. And there is this woman that he causes to die that he has an affair with, but then she dies because of his criminality. And then he goes to the daughter and gives her a, a handsome donation, etc., acting as if though he is an, an executor of that woman's estate. And this little girl, this woman, this daughter of this woman, starts to cry and talk about what a nasty little guy this other dude is. And he's all feeling for, sorry for himself and stuff like that. That's exactly what, what you are. You're like black. You're like the dude in Blacklist, the lead character. Yeah, the, that man, I forgot what his name is, in the show Blacklist. A person that is feeling sorry for a person you have victimized, but you're not prepared to confess, you're not prepared to admit what you did. Instead, you just want to rock up and, you know, just, you know, add, like, you know, put salve, like some, like, bandage a wound, uh, put a, a band-aid on cancer. It's not really healing, especially considering you are unprepared to confess what you have done. You don't want to tell the truth, but you pity a person for what you've done to them. Do you know what under heaven would make me feel real good inside, oh Pablo Escobar? Do you know what would make me feel real good inside, oh Black from Blacklist? Do you want to know what would make me feel all good inside, you prolific criminal you? When wahu dizeva danga riyako danya niyako san city, but you're still roaming these streets because you use witchcraft. Mm. I would greatly appreciate if you wrote me an email. My email is on my YouTube in the contact page. Mm. And say, I did it. Yeah, that, that would give me relief. That's what's good. Tell me that you took my career. Tell me that you stood in the middle of me and my husband coming together. Tell me that you froze my entire life. Tell me that you, what is this, messed with my mother so that she will hurt me in order to get to me. Tell me that you try to win me over, Kakorobela. Tell me that you try to slip a fast one in there. Tell me that you knew you were HIV positive and still wanted to get with me anyway because you knew that I was suffering so much that I wouldn't have, I would basically take anything that comes my way. Tell me that you deliberately wanted to come and destroy my life, but you know, your Jesus helped you. You survived, Misham. You dreamt about all my rubbish. That's the kind of stuff that'll make a sister feel like, oh, look at this person deserving to go to heaven. According to the scriptures, without confession and repentance, there is no remission of sins. You don't get to sit there from a wild little corner looking like a cackling chicken whose head has been cut off, unable to run further because you're getting weaker and weaker. You don't get to chill in that strange place and feel sorry for your victim and not go to hell for having a grief that leads to death. According to the scriptures, there are two types of grief. The first grief is worldly grief, and this leads to death. The second is godly grief, which leads to repentance. So just because you feel all sorry for Karabo, it does not put you one up anywhere. Because you have the kind of guilt and the kind of sorrow that takes you to hell anyway. Why? Because you got too much pride, bugger. That's what's good. To ever say, I did it. 
to ever say I'm sorry, to ever admit or uta we were lawyer, or go to Molota, now it's again one four five, Mori Rofo Mona, Kali here, Loma C, who was one of the beds, who be and so lawyer, or Unto Fofaker Lema Halama wrote, or you that girl. Well, it's a nonsense to twenty four hours a day, it's again all go That's what's good. How old got Halusetta Banaba Bang Horova, Taita Maro, Tobarubit? How got Halusetta Horova, Taita Banna Barubit? Oba Taita Ban, waiting on the Lady Carrie, Umotua Horo, by Grand Chapel, you are an arm, you're an armed bandit. If you tell the families you stole from, Honey, you got a shot now with Christ. You, who is a professing Christian, sitting around Korima every Sunday, Nyan, God is able, lift it up, he defeated the grave. Katamo, you gonna release a trickle of a tear down your strange little face. Crocodile violence, that's what's going on. Malkatala Pongo Wednesday, a corner. You go, Uyo Vagashi Sango Mutel Katalik, Impinjak, a career. You chilling in churches while doing witchcraft. You chilling in churches while being a saboteur. No. You know what would make me feel real good inside? So as not diss you? Mm. Is if you grab that pity that you feel now that you're all guilty. Now that the invisible qualities of God are operating in you, making out of you a better human thing. Yeah. Take that pity that you feel for me and convert it into a contrite spirit. A broken and a contrite spirit that the Lord will not despise. When you are contrite, you stop pitying your victims, but you recognize them as ones that you owe an apology. Stop feeling sorry for me. From a distance, plomilela. Yeah, morlota na yana maroke na rima. Kau ka atwa kere keng until you're actually ready to go and be with God. That's what's good. Yeah. So the second batch of people that pity the living daylights out of me are people who have bewitched me out of any prosperity at all. Know what they've done, regret it, wish they didn't do it, wish they could make like R. Kelly and turn back the hands of time. I'm sorry, girl, I, you can't. That's just the thing. You can't get in a time machine and go backwards and not be a witch. And so since you can't, the only thing you can do now that is feasible to heal that strange little pity that you feel for me is to say, Garabo, I have schnuffed lines of cocaine. I have taken fentanyl that I survived, but it nonetheless left me with brain damage. And uh, as a result of that, girl, I destroyed your whole future. I'm sorry. I'll take that. You know why? Because even though it will break my heart that you took my future, what is rather true is that I am not of this world, even though I am in it. And so the brevity of the glory of the pastures of this earth, as fleeting as they are, I recognize them as not worthy to languish over once you lose them. Because I have taken hold of the precious call upward, heavenward. I have taken hold of the precious son of man. I have taken hold of Jesus. And so I don't languish over the acquisitions of the planet. Meaning that a lost job, a lost, uh, like, healthy like young pregnancy a lost wedding day marriage a lost husband a lost seen mother a lost seen two sisters a lost brother that died i lost everything yeah that's what's good those things are fleeting like the glory of the pastures but eternal life is forever i have embraced heaven and so for those reasons really frankly mm, it's just water under the bridge everything that i've lost it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that i lost my ccma case that that random advocate at the ccma was frankly walking in prosecutorial misconduct it's irrelevant because if at all people say they are sorry i get to be like oh there we go i've got a pacifier now i will shut up an apology is what it'll take but it, it'll have to be an apology with a confession but you see a lot of people don't want to be regarded or known as the dude on top of the rofo zaba tomasi who aren't about busy by fofa baloya nobody wants to be known as the witchy random oki flying on top of people's roofs at night bewitching them astral projecting and trying to sleep with women by force nobody wants to be understood as to the body count that he has with all the demonic human sacrifice rituals that they've done and so because you want to keep these uh, like sordid affairs clandestine and under the table you will just pity your victims now that you are a guilty pablo escobar but without ever repenting in which case goodbye it's called hellfire you're going there you've got a worldly guilt that leads to death because you are unprepared to have anybody see the nakedness of what you've started i like to say to my cousin that chica chica jika hausa rata hubi tuwa maloye ko oska loya henkel since you don't like being called a witch don't do witchcraft yeah but the girl was like i'm sorry nobody's gonna know me as a witch and so she just continued to proliferate her rubbish and now today she's full of guilt full of pity for me audacity how can you pity me when you are so poor that's what's good mm. 
Nonetheless, on fila la botoko, and I'm like, girl, we're taking blom. Maybe you and I can talk, and perhaps maybe even work on a reconciled relationship. When you rock up and you tell me, nikita wiki tubile, I shut off the line of cocaine that destroyed my brain functionality. I frankly can never truly recover. I am essentially three quarters dead, but the one quarter of me, the the the, the one quarter that remains that is still alive, um, is happy to confess that I done did a dirty danger thing, and I done hurt you, and I done cause you to lose everything. However. But really, girl, I'm so sorry. I wish I had never done it. I wish I had never, never done it. I wish I had never seen no sangoma in my life. I wish I had never seen no twilight snake in my life. I wish I had never seen no tigaloshi in my life. I wish I had never seen no pepper in my life. I wish I had never seen no broom in my life. I wish I had never seen no evil cat in my life. I wish I had never seen no strange herbs in my life. I wish I had never seen no strange bones in my life. But I don't see these things and they giving me nightmares now however if i could just have you back in my life that would be great and in order to get that i'm prepared to let you know that i done did it in my life i did it in my life i did it in my life i guess that's the only time that my cousin would ever get a hug from me but are you prepared to say sorry sorry girl no of course you're not because your pride is eating away at you. You don't like being called witches, but you are just doing strange, eerie stuff. You are just causing hauntings in people's lives. Yeah, yeah, tell my life thing. If you don't want to come out with it, if you don't want to come out, come out wherever you are, then I guess stay at a distance because how dare you pity your victims when you are still holding on to what you did to them. Without confession and repentance, there is no remission of sins. You don't get to remain a part-time wish that's guilty for what you did to all of your victims and then still be a Christian. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. Last time I checked in the scriptures, it's called lukewarm. Yeah, Laodicea, that's you. Or you've got a reputation for being alive even though you're dead, so you could be Sardis. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is you're not the real deal. So stop pitying me like season desist. Like stay far, far away. Yeah, or jump, really. Frankly, nobody will miss you. That's what's good. Mm. I guess by is kela mosa di 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 out di chiringa na tsena. Yes. So these two category of human individuals that pity me, I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm not taking your booze at my party because frankly, it's a sober party. It's a virgin party. If you're having a strawberry decorate, it has no alcohol in it. And pity is a drunking. It is drunking. It is inebriating. It is intoxicating. It is alcoholing. I'm not prepared to be drunk anymore because currently I am drunk, but not with strong drink, but from affliction. And when I am this afflicted, all I can do is just rap on, rap on, rap on, rap on and talk about how it is that you guys got me. You you, you did me wrong. You did me real wrong. You was that nasty. Why you gotta be so bad? Mm, no, we're not doing it. Hi there, buddy. I don't take your pity. I do not welcome it. I do not welcome it. I do not welcome the pity of Christians that are standing back hoping that God is gonna be cool with what under heaven it is that they're doing while being in a position to help me along and yet standing back out of nothing but jealousy. And I have absolutely no respect for random buffoons walking around, hopping up and down like a kangaroo on a beach ball because they have no regard for seriousness at all, trying to feel sorry for me when they put me in this position. Le dawe, le le. Fentanyl is in your bloodstream. It has caused you to have a mental illness and you don't want to cure yourself. You don't want to check into a mental hospital. You want to get into a psychiatric ho ho ward. You also don't want to wear a stray suit. And so since you are unprepared to be restrained from the random rubbish that you are, like walk away, get out, like bugger off, like proper do that. You are the thing that goes bump in the night and what I do with such things is spray doom on it. Some aerosol that destroys pests or splat, like with a swat, like a fly. Let's get long bora, please. Do not pity me. I kindly implore you to not pity me because if the rapture were to happen right this moment, I would go to heaven and you would still be around. You therefore, of all people, ought be pitied. You are the ones that are going to be hanging around screaming like little headless chickens wondering, oh, I was left behind. Stop. You have the scriptures to help you understand if at all you're one of the five wise virgins or if at all you have got no oil in your lamp. If you have deliberately disregarded the case of a suffering saint as a Christian, it leaves your Christianity a lot to be desired. You're not just facing the risk of losing rewards at the great white, not great white throne judgment, but at the beamer seat of Jesus. You're facing the risk of not even being in Christ at all. 
Because it is literally the equivalent of Matthew 25, but the failing goats. That Christ says, you do not give me food, you do not, etc. You are Ananias and Sapphira, you are in danger. If you are standing outside of a believer, watching them languish as a professing Christian. And as for all the witches all up in my ministry, I mean, it's kind of comforting to know you at least have a conscience, but it's not going to do anything for you to pity me because frankly, I'm your boss, like I said. I'm your boss. At this point, I've arrived. I have found the pearl of great price. I am that chick all up in that narrow road, finding the thing that few people find. I have got the thing that matters. I have counted the cost of being a disciple. I have kept the faith. I've run the race and I'm waiting for God to tell me, well done, my good and faithful servant. I am waiting on the Lord for recompense come up and when the day arrives, when Deuteronomy 3, 6 gets fulfilled in your life, where men, women, and children are being killed indiscriminately, you will realize that you were in, like you, were, you basically deserved everything that came your way. The end of the world is at hand. Therefore, for the sake of your prayers, be sober, etc. That's what God's word has to say. If at all you are watching my ministry, you're in danger. Of course, I understand that there are people who are watching me that are merely just interested souls to understand what's going on out here in these streets. They are thirsty, hungry for righteousness. And so they watch me. By all means, come one, come all. Like, what do you call this thing? We say the more the merrier and set another plate. By all means, come. But all the others that call themselves seasoned Christians that are just watching a Christian self and Jeff are standing back doing nothing, taking notes, and every so often getting a trickle of a tear because God I was suffering like Papa, you do better for yourself to walk away from my ministry that God might not hold you accountable for leaving me destitute. Like the body of Christ is in danger. They're in trouble because they've embittered me. They have embittered me. They have scattered me as a sheep and have ignored me. They have embittered me. So that's just the issue. And everybody else that is a witch, the body of Christ is in danger and in, in, in trouble for having done that to me because they have emboldened Labatagati. They have emboldened witches to think they can continue to do what under heaven does it they want to do without getting any recompense. That's what's good. They have emboldened the kingdom of darkness against me. You have given bravado to devil worshippers. You have made an HIV positive man insist that I'm going to be his wife with two ex-wives. You have made witches just keep on experimenting with me because nobody's coming for me. You have given them bravado, so essentially you are also responsible for their continued sin. You have not acted as the restrainer that you were supposed to be against their works. You have not gone on right ahead and heeded what God had to say about what you must do in my particular life, so as to reprieve me from these witches continuing to experiment on me. For as long as I am maintained in solitude and isolation, they will keep on experimenting. And as a result of them continuously experimenting, some of them are guilty because they have endured a woman through a hardship that is entirely unnecessary. They feel bad, but they also feel entitled to me, and one of the biggest reasons that they will even believe in the God that you claim to serve is because he appears to not be coming through for me when some of y'all have been told expressly by him help Garabo but you stayed your hand because you were the jealous freak that's what's good Ananias that's what good Safira you've emboldened the wicked you have made them worse and worse you have made them unprepared to repent you have not displayed the grace of God you have not loved me the way that Christ loved the church you have not loved me as a brother you have left me destitute and so the wicked have just felt like they can do whatever they want and play on my head and now they're guilty. So I guess to a certain extent your wickedness has helped along to a, like, a little extent because it's given them guilt. But their guilt is worldly, it is carnal, it is fallen, it is barren, it is worthless because it is worldly. It leads not to repentance but to death. It just makes them go back to the drawing board. It just makes them wish they'd never done it but it does not make them wish, uh, turn over. It does, not make, it does not give them metanoia. It does not transform them unto Christ. So you have just made people more filthy than they already were. You have encircled them around my ministry, made them hook up a base camp, some tents every so often to see if at all they can't eventually get her. You have made out of me a woman that worldly men that are carnal, that love the devil, have called dibs on. The body of Christ has made carnal witchy men, sorcerers, call dibs on me. On some first come first served, the body of Christ did that. The body of Christ did that. So I do not care for your pity, like please, like stop. Blama, make like a flower. Because at this point, I am Lazarus and you're the rich man. At this point, you're like the random person passing a hobo on the street giving them 200 rand, thinking you're generous. When you earn a salary of 50,000 rands, you are the person that thinks you're being generous to a waiter at the restaurant, giving them a tip of 200 rands. When you are a CEO of an organization and so essentially a millionaire, and yet you think that because you gave the waiter or the waitress 200 bucks that you've given them money, it's not money, it's chump change, you're greedy. You're a glutton. You're holding on your hoarding to your wealth. 
That's what you are. The Lord is about to create a perspective on this earth that people are going to open the, up their eyes and recognize. In the scriptures, that woman with that little bit of money that gave all of it to the cause of Christ, according to the Lord, she had given the most. But some of y'all are sitting where you're sitting with homes cushy comfortable, with savings accounts running into the millions, and you are busy watching Christians across the world suffer, whose life does not even have to be that way. As for the believers that are organization holders, they, their own businesses, I've been talking on the rooftops about how I've been unemployed for all these years. You've listened to me, gauged my intelligence, gauged my skills, and still not offered me a freaking job. I'm sorry. You are Ananias and Safira. I was supposed to be rescued by Christians. That's why I can't even stand South Africa. Because it is this nation that calls itself Christian, and yet I'm unemployed. I don't understand how I can be unemployed in a Christian country as a Christian when I've got these skills, when I've displayed my potency, when I've displayed my skill set. I've displayed everything, and no one has come through for me. I've had a Christian who is prolific on social media in South Africa. He is a prolific so Christian content creator. His, video, his, his, uh, uh, con his content, his videos, are always premised around him giving the hundred rand, the two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, like a whole bunch of money to random people on the street that he finds that he feels like he wants to do a good thing for for the day and he likes wearing a mask etc to hide his face etc so nobody sees him because he wants to appear like what he's giving with his right hand his left hand is not seen etc like what the scriptures say that guy not subscribed but followed me on tiktok he followed me basically he was listening to my content he knew my struggles he knew everything i was going through and so while being the philanthropist that he is on the street nonetheless could not help me because of who i am and what i am so I don't know whether what took him over was envy, jealousy, or whatever it is that takes men over, especially black men, when they look at me. They feel entitled to me, and if they can't have me, they sit back and they say, I'm not going to do anything. That over there is Ananias. It's Safira. It's a man that's giving thousands of rands to all different kinds of people on the street, yet he cannot even pull some strings to get a woman a job, given that in and of himself he's a businessman. After listening to me, gauging my skills, gauging the fact that I'm good at what I do, he could not do anything for me. That's the body of Christ for you. It's not like nobody prolific in the body of Christ has looked at me. It's not like no Christian has looked at me that, is, that owns a company, that is a CEO of a company. They've been looking, they're just not doing anything. So I mean, I got pity, like relax. This is not a pity party, it's a proper party. Just a party, that's all it is. It's a party. Do not pity me because the pity is unfounded and unwarranted. And on top of that, I am above you, like in the worst way. It's just like I am the least on earth, but the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I am lowly here, but I'm great up there. I am poverty stricken here, but I'm wealthy. My treasures are in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, and thieves don't come in and, 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 and steal. I've got my inheritance in heaven. I am a Lazarus in the worst way. So, oh, rich man, please, like, you know, pride yourself in all the pump that you wear on this earth while you're still walking around when you're all hell bound. Relax, like, blom, make like a flower. I am trying to get you to know heaven. If you don't want to know it, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. But don't underestimate me while I am on earth because of the fact that you are calculating things in accordance to the parameters or the barometers of this measly, fleeting, fainting planet that's about to be bombed by the tribulation. It's just that, like, it's literally just that basic. Do not pity me. Do a better thing. Repent. Do a better thing. Have a broken and a contrite spirit. Do a better thing. Confess. Do a better thing and recognize that you are Ananias and Safira. And so do, and so repent. Do a better thing. And so walk away from my ministry if I stumble you. Do a better thing and make right with God. Do a better thing. Curb your jealousy. Exercise self control. Brittle your flesh into submission. Do a better thing and don't patronize me with pity. I'm signing out on Christ's name, Crank K.